Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us today. The Dr Our Driving Concern Employer Traffic Safety Program is pleased to be able to offer the webinar Transportation Safety and Mindfulness. I want to welcome uh, Lisa Robinson. Lisa is our Senior Program Manager with Our Driving Concern. A few things to note before we get started. If you joined us via phone, please press star six to, six to ensure your phone is muted. This will minimize background noise and ensure sound quality. If you should encounter any problems or issues, please type a message in the chat function to let us know, or you can email me at vena.anderson at nsc.org. The presenter's contact information will be available on the last slide. There is a very brief post-event survey at the conclusion of the webinar. Because this program is funded through grant dollars and provided at no cost to employers, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. With that, please welcome Lisa Robinson, and I will turn it over to her to begin. Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited that you're here. We hear a lot about what's going on in transportation right now, and mindfulness is such a key component, and it impacts health and safety. And, you know, I've known Alex for many years, and one of the things that he really talks a lot about is mindfulness, and he's brought us on a couple different journeys at different times in different meetings, and it's been so impactful. So Alex Epstein, he is the Director of Transportation Safety at the National Safety Council. He is an experienced public communication policy development strategist and team leader. But he, as a director of transportation safety, Alex works to develop and execute behavior and policy change initiatives, national public education campaigns, coalitions, road user outreach, and other activities to reduce injuries and fatalities associated with the council strategies to address transportation safety. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Alex to talk about mindfulness and give us some strategies and some tips. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, and good morning to everybody. I'm so glad you all could be there. Uh, Lisa, thank you. Cindy, thank you. Vina, thank you. I'm truly blessed to have a team that includes all of you, uh, and I'm truly blessed to have an audience that includes all of you because uh, all that you do makes an impact in transportation safety, and I'm hoping that you can get a few pointers from this uh, uh, discussion today. So uh, I call this a personal journey because um, truly this is a, uh, a journey, number one, we never stop growing and we never stop learning. And number two, it is very personal. Uh, and it's personal because uh, for two reasons. The first is, is that I, I wasn't born with a knowledge of mindfulness. In fact, I was never taught it, except uh, I came to it later in life through a variety of means. Um, and uh, let me just point out uh, a little bit of my story. Um, on the left, you see a, a shot of a picture of New York City. Uh, and that's there because this is, this is, these are the streets that I grew up on. And these are the streets that I learned to drive on. I truly took my driver's test in New York City. Um, uh, up in the upper uh, uh, quadrant is a, a screenshot of Fairbanks, Alaska in the ice fog. And uh, I put that there because I spent four or five years up in Fairbanks starting my career. Um, I went from New York to Fairbanks. Down below is uh, Chicago. I spent uh, the bulk of my career um, in Chicago um, and um, joined the National Safety Council there and drove uh, for many years on those streets. And on the right is my current home, uh, LA. And uh, as you all know, LA has uh, among the, we all have terrible traffic, uh, LA, except at this moment in time has uh, some of the worst uh, always. And so uh, adapting to all of these different situations has been an interesting um, uh, event for me. Um, I met my wife in LA, um, our kids were born in LA, um, and my wife is a, a meditation teacher and a yoga teacher, and through her, I learned about the practice of mindfulness. So um, today we're gonna talk a little bit about what it is, what, is, what it has to do with safety, and I'm gonna give you one tip, okay? It's, it's a practice. Uh, but I also wanna stress that while um, it, uh, I work for the National Safety Council, 
Um, this is not a uh, practice that is an, a, an official policy of the National Safety Council. I call this a personal journey because this is my personal suggestion as to something that folks can explore. This is something that I found very helpful and I, I uh, explained to my team um, what it is and how to do it, um, but it is not an official policy at this point. So the question is about mindfulness is, you know, what is it? It's, it's the process of being fully aware and engaged in yourself and all that surrounds you. So I'll say that again, being fully aware and engaged in yourself and all that surrounds you. It's not a, it's not a religion. Um, it is something that is uh, received a fair amount of notoriety uh, through corporations adopting it, um, management consultants adopting it, um, and a variety of other uh, just practitioners who have found this useful. Um, so what it does, what mindfulness does in a few words, is it allows you to check in with your mind. As we say, take the temperature of your mind. What's the weather in your mind? Most people go through um, their day and you know you, get, you hit the ground running, right? You get your cup of coffee, you're all torqued up and you're ready to go. But are you preoccupied? Are you worried about that presentation that you're going to do for uh, uh, TechStat this morning and concerned that you're going to get everything? And I'm talking about myself. Am I thinking about, am I distracted? Am I stressed? I could have put a, a big COVID-19 picture up here. You know, what are we all thinking about? Um, this is, are you impaired? Um, have you taken medications? Um, so you have to have some kind of awareness of your thoughts. Um, you have to have some kind of awareness of your feelings. Are you worried? Are you expressing fear? Um, are you angry? Has your, has your boss said something to you? Has your kid said something to you? Um, has your spouse said something to you? Um, and are, are you preoccupied with your feelings? And, um, you know, are you excited? All of these have to do with uh, your emotions have something to do with how you perceive the world, right? And so as you have these lenses on, you're trying to understand um, how will my behaviors be affected? And finally, um, what about your body? Do you have an awareness of your body? Are you tired? Did you get enough sleep last night? Um, are you sick? Um, can you, you know, do you have a stiff neck from sleeping funny? And, you know, all of these affect your ability to drive, right? Because if you have a stiff neck, you can't turn your head enough to see the mirrors, right? Or there, if you're tired, you're obviously, your reaction time is slow and you may, um, let's hope not, but you, you know, you could, take micro naps inadvertently or, or worse. So being aware of your body and the state of your body before you drive, being aware of your emotions and the state of your emotions, um, being aware of your mind are all very important. And so this is a video which this morning on in -depth today, demonstrates a this a little bit. When it comes to cases of road rage, NBC's Joe Fryer has more on that. Joe, good morning. Forget this crazy video, a guy riding on the hood of a car after a roadside incident with another driver. Well, today the two men are expected back in court, but this is hardly an isolated case. In fact, numbers provided to NBC News from the Department of Transportation show a dramatic strike in the number of fatalities from road rage incidents. This morning, we're going to show you how to avoid road rage and what you can do if you find yourself the target of an enraged motorist. <laughs> You're watching Extreme Road Rage. The driver of this SUV repeatedly smashing another car over and over. Oh my gosh! 
then jumping on the roof. This driver attacks a vehicle with a tire iron. A scuffle on the side of the highway. Mm, mm, mm. These two men acted a fool on the side of 35, yeah. Out of control road rage caught on video again and again and again. <laughs> That's what you get! Watch this motorcyclist kick that car, setting into motion a dangerous chain reaction. And then in January, this guy riding on the hood of a car. It finally comes to an end when other motorists block him in. Can you believe all this over a fender bender? It's amazing no one died in any of these incidents. But others aren't as fortunate. According to the Federal Department of Transportation, the number of road rage fatalities jumped dramatically from 110 in 2007 to 487 in 2017. That's a 350% increase. But there are a number of ways you can de-escalate the situation and avoid road rage. I'm here with driving safety expert Alex Epstein, who's with the National Safety Council. Thanks for being here with us. Hi, Joe. So before you even get in the car, there are things you should keep in mind, right? Absolutely. You have to first remember that driving is fundamentally one of the most dangerous things you're going to do all day long. So it's important to be in the proper state of mind when you get in the car, relaxed, calm, ready to go. Right now, I'm not angry, I'm not feeling in a rush, so that's a good thing, right? It's a great thing. All right, we're good to go. I'm behind the wheel driving a car on a stretch of road closed for this demonstration by the El Monte, California Police Department. In another car, Maureen Vogel, also from the National Safety Council, today playing the part of an aggressive driver. Okay, so she's tailgating us, she's weaving back and forth, she's been honking her horn. What should we be doing right now? The main thing we should be doing, Joe, is we should be trying to get away from her. We should let her go. We should de-escalate the situation. Pull to the right, let her pass, don't engage. Easy enough, but watch what happens when she pulls up next to me at a stop. Hey, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. Okay, so she's yelling at me right now. What should I be doing? You should be looking straight ahead. Don't engage with her. Roll up your window, lock the doors. Who gave you a driver's license? Let her proceed ahead. I'm pretty worked up right now. Part of me wants to say something back to her. Should I do that? No, you should not do that. You should take some deep breaths, count backwards from 20. By counting backwards, what does that do? It lowers your heart rate and allows your body to relax. You want to be calm behind the wheel. You want to be able to be focused on the task of driving. Some simple tips to avoid this. Here's something else to keep in mind. If an enraged driver follows you, don't get out of your car. Try to get to a public space with other people, preferably a police department. And using your horn is almost always an instant agitator, so don't do it. In short, ask yourself if it's really worth putting yourself at risk just to shave a few seconds off your trip. So road rage is just one of the possible outcomes. Uh, on emotions that are not understood and kept in check. In reality, just simple driving, just basic driving is uh, something that will be affected by all of the uh, um, emotions that, that we talked about earlier. And so how do you understand what your, what your body is uh, exhibiting, what your mind is exhibiting? How do you, un how do you understand you know, how your mind is functioning? Um, the breath is the key. Uh, it's a simple um, thing that we do every day. Um, 20,000 times a day we breathe. Um, but the idea of focusing your attention on your breath gives you an opportunity to release other thoughts in your mind, release other activities, and relax. And what I'd like to take you through for the next minute or two um, is just the simple act of breathing. I know it sounds funny um, um, because you're breathing anyway, but for the next minute or so, can you focus on your breath? And you could do this with your eyes closed or your eyes open, however you're most comfortable. Um, this is something that you could do uh, at home, 
in your cubicle at work, in your office at work. You could um, do it before you start your drive when you get in your car, but try to inhale through your nose and count to four and then exhale through your nose and count to four and just repeat it. And if other thoughts come into your mind, don't worry, don't be angry, they will, it's what we do all day, but just keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. See if you can put your attention on just this next breath. Maybe you can feel where it enters your nose or your chest or your belly. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And I don't know about you, but I, I feel like I could always use that kind of practice. As I say, it's something you can do for free. It's something that will help center you and help you understand if there are parts of your body that are hurt, hurting, or if your mind is just so filled with thoughts, it will help you clear them a little bit. But this awareness um, helps your senses engage in the task of driving. And you know, all of your senses, except for taste, hopefully, are involved in, in driving. You know, your eyes, can you see the road clearly? Can you spot possible issues in advance? Are you distracted? Your ears, can you hear sirens, horns? Maybe you could spot some trouble in your car. You can hear a tire flapping if it's flat or maybe hear some weird noise in your transmission. What about smell? Sometimes you can understand if your brakes are going bad or if there's a pr engine problem, if you're burning oil or if your tires are bad. But all of these senses are engaged in the task of driving. Touch, rumble strips, those simple indentations which have saved countless lives. Lane markings. How about steering issues? You feel your steering wheel wobbling. Or ADAS sensor telltales like blind spot warnings. Sometimes those are haptic as well. These are other things to be aware of. And you know, the whole push toward vehicle automation is about trying to figure out machines that can provide this kind of sensory awareness as well as our bodies do normally, right? We're still a long way off. And then with each trip, you have to be aware of and know, did you leave enough time? Are you gonna be in a hurry? Is it gonna freak you out? Do you have 10 minutes to go to, to arrive on a 20 minute trip? Did you plan well? Are you gonna go there for the first time? You know, maybe you have no idea what parking is like. Maybe you have no idea of how do you access this address? Can you turn left into it? Do you have to go through an interchange, et cetera? What about the weather? You remember that first slide that I had up in Fairbanks, right? It was a little brisk most days in the winter. Ice fog. You know, there are certain regions of the country that have gorgeous weather all the time, but many more parts of the country for which 
rain, tornadoes, hurricanes, snow. These are all variables that you can check on before your trip if you are mindful about the fact that what you're about to do, which is drive, is one of the most dangerous things that you could do, uh, that you will do all day. And some other things, you know, to think about. These are all things to think about. Is your vehicle in good operating condition? What about your clothing? Do you have proper eye protection? Are you wearing the right kind of shoes for driving? Are you aware how to use the safety devices in your car and when to use them? How about electronics? Are you tempted to constantly engage or can you shut them down? For, for right now, our advice is that you don't turn your car or your truck or your vehicle into another office to extend your uh, ability to get work done. We say when you're driving, just drive. Focus on the drive. It's complicated enough. You don't need to be balancing other work activities. If you have to do something for work, you have to do something for your family, it's all important. Just don't do it at the same time you're driving. So to sum up, mindfulness is the practice of being aware of your body, your mind, and your emotions, and to being present for reality, being present for all that we're experiencing in this moment. And I think that uh, personal relationships are better when people can focus on being with the people that they're with, is my opinion. Um, I certainly know around my family, if I can get the kids to put away their phones and my wife to put away their phone and me to put away their phone as we sit around for dinner, usually if they're not too grumpy, it turns out to be a much more fulfilling experience. So personally, if you can be present, professionally, if you can be present, and as you drive, if you can be present and aware of how you are and how things around you are, we'll all be better off. Again, the breath is the key in my estimation. We do it 20,000 times a day. Take three, four, five minutes a day and just breathe and focus on the breath. And if you wanna learn more, please reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions. There's my email down below. Alex? Yes, hi. webinar as well as your slides um, located on the website but one of the great questions that just came in for you was this is such an important topic but what should employers do right now as people re-enter the workforce what type of training or education or any sort of effort should employers put to educating employees as they re-enter the workforce again coming back from their maybe their home offices into their um, traditional work environment well, I think that that has to do a little bit with uh, uh, safety and culture of the organization. Um, and so I think that the first thing is, is that we have to remind workers as they re-enter the transportation network and come back to work that um, the typical problems that they've experienced in the past, that the typical issues have not disappeared. In fact, some of them have gotten worse. The National Safety Council put out a news release today that said the roads may be empty out there, but people are driving crazier than ever. And that um, while um, fatality rates are declining a little bit, the, the rate of crashes and fatalities is increasing. It's jumped 14%, believe it or not. The fatality rates nationwide are up 14%, even though 50% of the traffic is diminished. And the reason is, is because people are speeding and people are driving recklessly. So I think 
a number one message to the workplace is that even though the roads at this point may be lighter with traffic, it, it, that is not a license to speed. Just because your car can go 100 miles an hour doesn't mean that you should go 100 miles an hour. And certainly there are company policies. And if there aren't company policies, there should be company policies that talk about speed, that talk about impairment, and that talk about um, um, seat belts, and that talk about distraction. So uh, employers can think about instituting policies that employees are required to follow that will ensure basic good driving habits if people are not used to or prepared to drive mindfully. So you're saying also educate these employees so they understand that they need to be fully engaged and they need to practice calming techniques so that way they're driving as safely as possible for themselves as well as others on the road. Right, Alex? Absolutely. Absolutely. We recommend that. Um, you know, people, you've, you've been doing this for years and I know that lots and lots of people are, uh, have uh, on this webinar have been doing this for years and we all know that people learn at different rates. People have uh, certain preconceived um, notions about what they, about their ability to drive. Most people think they drive better <laughs> than they really do. Um, but, um, um, the, and, and many people think that they don't need help, right? They know everything. So um, my, our advice is yes, we recommend the uh, notion of um, um, teaching mindfulness and the practice of mindfulness and the practice of um, being fully aware in the moment and focused on the drive. Um, but many, some people are just plain old resistant to it and require require structure and limits, the do's and don'ts. Well, and somebody mentioned that mindfulness has never been more essential than it is today, which is absolutely true. We've heard this from a few other speakers, Alex, that are talking about how COVID-19 is affecting everybody's when they're driving and they're distracted, right? So that adds another element of distraction and concern and worry, which you mentioned earlier. So um, how, I mean, do you have any recommendations that employers actually should think about? Is it, is it safety talks? Is it just, you know, some small dialogue in small groups? Or is it all of the above? I think it's all of the above. I, I would, I really, I, you know, I, I would love to know what the audience's experience is as I tried to take them through a minute, really, we only spent about a minute doing it, of breathing and whether or not people found it helpful. And if they found it helpful, would they feel comfortable sharing this? Um, so I, I would really love to get that feedback. Uh, Well, and you did have a few people, Alex, that did indicate that in the chat window, that they enjoyed the breathing exercise. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I wasn't aware of that. Um, and so, you know, I, 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 again, it depends on the culture of your organization. Some of you know your employees well enough to know that, you know, they're never going to sit and listen for something like that. But on the other hand, uh, many of them uh, will, we think everybody will benefit but we just don't, uh, you know, we want everybody to be willful participants. Um, Alex, I don't know if you can see the chat, but you know, they said it was amazing. So, you know, Alex, I think we'll do a follow-up to this. I would love to see if we can't do a small article in one of our next upcoming newsletters. And I think that would be great as well as we're gonna place this on the website, but I do think some of your tips were wonderful. And I think everybody will be able to take these and they'll be able to find them on, on the website under our archived webinars. So they'll see your slides. And then I think we'll work on getting an article in the newsletter too, so that people can, can take some of the tips you just provided and they can implement them in the workplace, if that's okay with you. Of course it's okay. And, and again, I, I'm uh, serious about this. I, I would like to um, make the presentation as useful as possible. And so if it's helpful, please tell me what worked. If it if you think of things that can be improved, please 
tell me what can be improved. I'd like to do this more frequently. I really appreciate uh, you, Lisa, and uh, TxDOT uh, for giving me the platform um, and the National Safety Council. Um, again, this is my personal journey um, and um, you know, I'm, I'm on it every day. It's a practice, I'm not an expert at it. You know, I'm learning just like we all are. And I know people that do this mindfulness exercise and practice uh, every day and they still have to practice. It still doesn't come uh, as, as second nature. So um, um, thank you all. Well, we appreciate you, Alex. And if everyone here can make sure there is a link in the chat so they can fill out the evaluation form. We do use that for our grant program and we do appreciate it. And I wanna thank everyone for being here today. And as I said, the um, webinar and the slides will be archived on the website. Thank you guys so much. Have a, have a great and safe day.